welcome to Around the Dog World, back in the beautiful setting of Lowesley Park. Usually, people come to this stately home and estate to take a tour around the estate and a look around the walled gardens, but this weekend is rather different. This is Richmond Championship Dog Show. Before we get stuck into the show here in Guildford this weekend, you might have noticed that I've got a bit of company this weekend. We welcome back Marina, nice to see you. Hello. You just can't help yourself, can you? No, I can't. I actually have been to a lot of shows, but just <laughs> not where you've been filming. Right, not the ones we are at. Yeah. Um, usually about now, we take a look at the recent Best in Show winners since our last programme. But actually, since City of Birmingham, there haven't been any, so we can get straight to the action at Richmond this weekend. Yeah, that's right. And 12 months ago in Lowesley Park, we watched Ricky the Standard Poodle take only his second all-breed Best in show. And what followed was an autumnal blitz that saw him rocket up the top dog table, gathering 108 points in just five months and finishing two points clear of his closest rival. So will the show in Surrey this weekend prove a springboard to success again? Or can the current top dog keep his place or even extend his lead at the head of the table? Speaking of which, a quick update on the current positions in the top dog table is in order and building what is an almost unassailable lead with nearly double amount of points of the second place dog is champion Travella striking steel the wire fox. In silver and bronze positions is Bull Mastiff Mac and Alaskan Malamute Bart, with Misty the Smooth Coat Chihuahua in fourth. The German Spitz Jen is in fifth, with Cassandra the Saluki and Eric the Pekingese next up. Eighth on the table is Damage the Japanese Chin, closely followed by Sid the Sheltie and Elkhound Pearl tied for ninth place. Now, alongside the seven groups and Best in Show this weekend, we'll take a brief look a little later on at a part of this sport close to my heart, junior handling. This is where my interest in the hobby first started, and it's a vital part in making sure the sport is preserved for the next generation. But first, we need to find out who will represent the hounds and toys in the Best in Show lineup for Claire Coxall on Sunday night. So let's go to the main ring and see the toy group judged by Ray Parry. Please do show your appreciation. First we have the Athen Pincher. Number 32. The Bichon Frise, number 58. Long Coat Chihuahua, number 203. Chinese Crested, number 386. The Havanese, number 478. The Italian Greyhound, number 528. The Japanese Chin, number 547. The Lao Chin, number 637. The Papillon, number 676. Pomeranian, number 801. And completing the shortlist, the Maltese, number 1912. And the winner of the toy group at Richmond 2014, it's the Maltese, number 1912. Taking the group two spot, it's the Long Coach Chihuahua, number 203. In group three, 
The Japanese Chin, number 547. And completing the group, it's the Smooth Coach Chihuahua, number 301. Starting off the group one winner, the Maltese. Followed by the Long Coat Chihuahua, the Japanese Chin, and the Smooth Coat Chihuahua. Well, Sarah, that's uh, two around the dog world, two weekends in a row, two dogs winning groups. You've got to be pretty happy with that. I'm shocked. <laughs> to do it with a, this young dog, who I've just started showing this year, is right. amazing. So we'll just see what next week brings. <laughs> uh, last weekend was Boss. This weekend is Bandit. Tell, tell us a bit about Bandit. Bandit's a young dog. What I, um, For the first time, I actually went out and used a stud dog. Right. and I've left him at home for his first two years of his life to right. campaign over kennel mates and brought him out and he's taken off, <laughs> loves love showing. At the City of Birmingham in the best in show ring, Boss was showed that he's a little tricky to handle. Does Bandit have the same issues? Bandit show, does show and he enjoys it yeah. and he's not, he's not got the brains to be that naughty. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a good thing, so we'll just see how he goes. Well, Ray, congratulations on judging your first ever group um, at Richmond. I suppose that the first thing to ask is, did you enjoy it? I enjoyed every minute of it. Um, and tell us about your winner, the, the Maltese. Well, I thought the Maltese was absolutely outstanding. It just caught my eye as it came in the ring and the movement, superb. Um, and tell us about the group as a whole. What did you, what did you think of the, all of the dogs in there today? I thought it was a really good, strong group today. The quality was there. Um, and Richmond is one of the most famous shows in, in the country. Must be a privilege to have your first group here. I was very honoured when they asked <laughs> me, very. Yeah. Okay, so once more on the up and down. This is the Petit Basso Griffon Vendillon, number 1106. The Basset Hound, number 1113. Smooth Haired Dachshund, 1313. The Greyhound, 1459. The Norwegian Elkhound, 1542. Barrowhound, 1569. The Rhodesian Ridgeback, 1641. The Saluki, 1690. And the winner of the Hound Group at Richmond 2014 is the Petit Basset Griffon Bondion number 1106. Taking Route 2, it's the Smooth Haired Dachshund 1313. Group three is the Whippet. Number 1762. Completing the quartet, it's the Basset Hound, number 1113. And if you can see a lap of honour from our winners, please, starting off with the Petit Basset Greffin Bondion, the Smooth Haired Dachshund, the Whippet, and the Basset Hound. Congratulations. Well, Sarah, I watched Best of Breed earlier, and he was making things difficult for you, but you must be overwhelmed by, by the group tonight. Delighted, gobsmacked. She's a week, um, a week over a year, yeah. uh, so she got her fourth ticket today, which made her up, which was unbelievable and fantastic <laughs> in itself. 
but to then to go off and win the group at this young age and being obviously a Jilly daughter, it's just, it's just amazing. She was just a superb mover. She's only young and she could be naughty when she was being <laughs> set up, which must have driven the handler bananas, but <laughs> she was such a sound, lovely mover. The likeness to her mother is remarkable, it's uncanny. When you're handling, do you get the same sort of feeling you get when handling Jilly? Yeah, we, yeah, we do actually. We've, we've, we've said from pretty much from the get-go, and obviously you try not to tempt fake, um, but she is like a mini-me where her mother's <laughs> concerned, the way she, how she looks, how she moves, how she behaves, her smile, everything. She's got the same temperament as yes. her mother because she was naughty. <laughs> And that's what really what you want. Mm. You don't want just a, a model. And Jilly, of course, rose to fame at 14 months old, reserve best in show at Crafts. Do you dare dream about what, what Annie can do? No, <laughs> <laughs> basically. Um, we'll take it slow and steady, like she's still only a baby. So we enjoy the, the ride for however short <laughs> or long it lasts with her. So it's the end of a long day here at Richmond on day one and we've just seen the completion of the Hound Group but first let's just chat about the winners in the Toy Group which yeah. was judged first by Ray Parry, it was her first group. It was and on the last programme we watched Sarah Jackson taking uh, Benetton bossy boots to a group win. This weekend she has another Maltese in the ring and it takes its first group win as well. Yeah, it's fantastic, isn't it? Uh, it's got a couple of group placings, about four group placings, wow. and it's got three tickets and three best of reads, and owned by Sarah and Andrea Wiley. And this one is Benetton Designer Label, I think. Yeah. yeah. Moving on to the Hound Group, and I really do love this dog because it is the spitting image of her mother who was a fantastic dog, Jilly, Crafts Best in Show winner, top dog all breeds 2012, and it's fantastic to see her daughter with the same sort of personality and this is, was her first best of breed and a, and a group win. What can you say? Yeah, I know. And the thing is, she's still so young. She only just turned 12 months, so she's actually got four tickets and was made up today, so That's a... quite an achievement. Yeah. Good morning everybody. This is the third edition of A Stockman's Eye. Um, this time we're being filmed, so possibly it might be my last. <laughs> now when they're made reasonably well and trained physically like you would a gymnast, which is really all that dressage is, you end up with something that stays sound for a very great deal longer. So said she would catch some people out too, didn't I? She's <laughs> <laughs> yes, a good girl, are you are. She says, I know you love me, Auntie Patricia. Good old buzz. Trick trot, trick trot. You can see that with the butcher's cart on the back, can't you? You know, what a fabulous walk. Welcome back to Around the Dog World. It's day two here at Richmond Championship Show, and today it's the turn of working pastoral and terrier groups. First in the main ring tonight is the terrier group, judged by Zena Thornack. Now they're each being given another opportunity to shine, and we start off with the Border Terrier. And now to the Cairn Terrier, number 2144. The best of breed winning Staffordshire Bull Terrier, 2487. And now we have the Wire Fox Terrier, 4293. Sky Terrier, two, three, four, one.
Best of breed winning soft coated Wheaton Terrier, 2359. The Manchester Terrier, 2183. And last but by no means least, the Irish Terrier, 2180. And the winner of the Terrier Group here at Richmond 2014. It's the Wire Fox Terrier, number 4293. Second in the group goes to the Sky Terrier, number 2341. Group three is the Staffordshire Bull Terrier, number 2487. And for group four, it's the Irish Terrier, number 2180. <laughs> Leading off with our best of brew winner, the Wire Fox Terrier. Followed by the Sky Terrier. The Staffordshire Bull Terrier. And the Irish Terrier. Congratulations. Christina, thank you for joining us. You were the first group in the ring tonight with the Terriers. Mm -hmm. What were your overall comments on tonight's group? I thought it was the best group so far. The toy group looked exciting last night, but the terriers were really difficult to sort out. Some top quality, world-class dogs in there. And the winner, which was the Wire Fox Terrier, um, OK, he's a well-known dog, but I gave him his second challenge certificate as a baby last year. And to go over him again, I went over him with a fine-tooth comb to make sure I was right on what I thought the first time. And he's, he's a stunning dog. He's absolutely faultless as far as I'm concerned. He's the best Y Fox Terrier I've ever judged. No wow. doubt about that. It's the Alaskan Malamute, number 3427. Now we have the boxer, 3586. The Bull Mastiff, 3712. The Giant Schnauzer, 3862. The Great Day, number 3895. The Portuguese Water Dog, 3982. The Siberian Husky, 4203. And making up the eight. It's the Tibetan Mastiff, 4260. And the working group winner at Richmond, 2014, it's the Bull Mastiff, number 3712. Group two, it's the Boxer, 3586. Group three, the Alaskan Malibu, number 3427. And the leading the lineup, the Siberian Husky, number 4203. A big round of applause, please, for our remaining shortlisted threes, the Bull Mastiff, followed by the Boxer, the Alaskan Malibu, and the Siberian Husky. This is a final call for all the best of breed winners in the pastoral group. Well, Peter, if at the beginning of the year someone told you that you and Mac would be sitting reserve top dog in September, what would you have said? Not in a million years. <laughs> I'm, I'm absolutely shocked that you've said that. 
Um, beginning of the year, you saw a great win at Boston, reserve best in show. Five more groups since then. He's having a phenomenal year. He really is. He's took six groups in total now this year. Um, four group twos, you know. It's just unbelievable for a bull master to achieve these high honours. It's, it's an honour for me, you know, to, to be in there with him doing it. And on the programme we filmed at National Working Pass for Breeds, we saw you go best in show there. And Terry Munro, the judge, spoke about him being a very athletic specimen. Yes, he did, yeah. Um, I, I mentioned at the time, it's a f he, he has this natural fitness mm. um, and he has this energy and he just goes all day and for such a big dog, it really is unusual. It's, it's fantastic to see him in the ring. He, he's one of my favourites, I have to say. You're going into best in show tomorrow. How do you feel that'll go? Well, it's the Fox Terrier, isn't it? <laughs> you know, he's the one to beat at the moment yeah. and everyone wants to beat him and he's such a fantastic dog as well. It's, you know, it's, if we ever beat him, it'd be everything for me and I'd, I'd hang me lead up and that'd be, <laughs> I'd be finished forever. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. You were the working group judge today. Yes. And what were your overall thoughts on your working group today at Richmond? I think, as always, they were good and okay. But the one, I was ha happy with the ones I pulled out. The eight that I brought out, I was more than happy with. Okay, mm. now can we just talk about your Group 1 winner, please? Wonderful dog. Superb breed type, soundness. Soundness in heavier breeds can be an issue. Altogether, good, a good, substantial, matured well. A good dog, thoroughly good dog. It's the Australian Shepherd Dog, number 2580. The Border Collie, 2779. <laughs> the Finnish Lapland, 3061. The Hungarian Puli, 3121. The Norwegian Blue Hun, 3166. And the Pyrenean Sheepdog, 3216. 3303, the Shetland Sheepdog. Now we have the last of the shortlist. It's the Cardigan Welsh Corgi 3368. <laughs> and the winner of the pastoral group here at Richmond 2014, it's the Australian Shepherd Dog number 2580. <laughs> group two, it's the Border Collie 2779. In group three is the Pyrenean Sheepdog, number 3216. And group four is the Shetland Sheepdog, number 3303. And let's have a lap of honour from our winners, starting with the Australian Shepherd Dog, the Border Collie, the Pyrenean Sheepdog, and the Shetland Sheepdog. Congratulations. Melanie, many congratulations. Austin, uh, is it his first group one? Second. Oh, second. Where was his first? He won his group at East of England this year. Oh, that's right. And Oh, that was, it was a different handle, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Annie Corbett handled it for me because I was away judging in uh, Lithuania. So how do you feel it went all tonight? Oh, it was brilliant. Yeah, yeah. He's, I mean, he's only just 14 months old, so I was really pleased. Anything in the group is a bonus, and I thought he showed really well, so I was really pleased with him. I watched him come in from America uh, when he was a puppy, and he looked well, he's always in immaculate condition. Uh, he's a sound dog, he's good for breed type, he's very well handled. He's just a baby, isn't he? Is he? Baby, and uh, where do you think he can go from here, though? Oh, 
best in show across. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't know really. I mean, I'm hoping he's going to be a good dog for the breed. Uh, you know, useful stud dog and um, and and encourage you know new blood in the in the breed. So was it nice to get your hands on him it finally? It was lovely because it, w once you do, especially with the dogs like the Pooley, which I shortlisted, you don't know what they're really like until you can get them on the table and get your hands under the coat and have a good look. Welcome back to Around the Dog World on day three of Richmond Championship Dog Show. Day three holds gun dog and utility and of course, best in show. But first, we need to take a look at yesterday's group winners, Marina. Yep. First of which, Terrier group winner under Xenothorn Andrews, a 26th, I believe, yep. champion Travella striking to steal. Yeah, he can do no wrong at the moment, can no. he? Um, but he looked on top form. Bill Brown Cole was handling and um, he looked really good in there. Uh, and third Staffordable Terrier. Yeah, it was really nice that because actually it came straight from the breed. Obviously Staffies always have huge entries mm. and the group was actually halfway through and it joined on the end. So it had been in its class, it had been in the challenge, mm. it got in best of breed, it comes in the group, it gets shortlisted mm. as well, but it just kept going. Moving on to the, the second group of the night was the working group. Yep. I've loved this dog since Boston this year. Yeah, that's right. Um, we've got reserve best in show at Boston. It's great for the owners, but I don't think he would have even known that it was going to be runner-up top dog in his sitting in September yeah, after yeah. getting reserve best in show way back in January. But, you know, that dog just goes all day. And conversely, two quite experienced dogs in the ring with the Wire Fox and the Bull Mastiff winning groups. This one, a really quite inexperienced dog, but taking its second group win, the Australian Shepherd. Yeah, still only just out of puppy, mm. um, and it's been made up into a champion. Fantastic. And taking a second group, and, you know, all three groups yesterday, it's a longer day because we've got three groups rather than two, but um, all the dogs cope really, really well. And we've got to be looking forward to best in show now, but of course, this weekend, we need to take a look at something else first. Yeah, absolutely. For the last 37 years, Richmond here has has hosted the Junior Handling Association semi-finals and I say for the last 37 years because this year is actually the last time it's going to host it because next year it's actually going to go to six other national group championship shows. Usually about now when we do features we need to go and find someone that knows a little bit more about the, the subject than us but luckily I'm standing next to someone that was a Scottish British and world junior handling champion. <laughs> um, so Marina tell us a bit about what's the difference in a handling class from a breed class. Okay, well, basically the difference is, is that the judge is judging the handler on their skill and presentation of the dog, rather than in the breed rings behind us, and what we see in Best in Show in the group rings is that the judge is judging the dog. So the judge will be looking for things like rapport, how well the handler gates the dog, because obviously every breed has to be moved differently. Mm. The base has got to be turned out immaculately, the dog's got to be turned out immaculately. The best handlers can make an average dog look like a champion, mm. and you know, not very good handlers can make a champion look like a very average dog. And of course, that's really what it's all about, giving these juniors the, the best hope of going into a breed ring and coming up with the top prize. Yeah, I suppose so. I mean, the, really, the Junior Handling Association semi-finals is a springboard to the breed rings but often most of the six to ten year olds even that compete in the junior handling classes are actually competing with their own dogs in the breed rings already mm. it's just that it's it's an extra class for them to compete in and it's something that only they can compete in yeah. not with the adult it really is super when we when we get to see these youngsters competing at the top level um, a little earlier on in the weekend we sat you down with the organizer of the JHA semi-finals for the past 37 years Liz Cartledge. Hello Liz, thank you very much for joining us. Um, it's uh, quite a poignant moment, isn't it really, sitting in front of the JHA semi-finals tent. You've been involved in it right from the start. Um, can you just talk us a little bit about the history of the JHA? Yes, um, a very long time ago now, my husband, my late husband, felt that it was time that the youngsters that coming to shows with their parents got involved in, in some way and not just got up to mischief and ran off. So 
he instigated that we should have a couple of classes just for the juniors to see their handling ability and it was quite small in those early days but it grew a bit like Topsy. And so looking back sometimes often it was the handler with the biggest dog and the sweetest smile that sort of won. <laughs> well I think that's true up to a point. Yes you say a pretty girl in a frilly dress and an old English that dragged her across the showground but one, <laughs> once we were doing proper classes I think they soon got the hang of what was expected of them and certainly the quality has got a lot, lot better. And behind us, the roll of honour sits proudly outside the JHA tent. You're obviously very proud of what you've achieved. Yes, and I think Joe, my late husband, would, would be proud and surprised at how it's grown. I mean, some of those juniors, they've got children of their own and, and even possibly one generation <laughs> on, I don't know. <laughs> obviously, it's, it's a bit sad this year because it's an end of an era. It's going to be the last time uh, Richmond will be hosting the semi-finals. Yes, of course I'll be sad to leave, but on the other hand, you have to look ahead of times and I think the idea of moving it to six group shows will be a, a step forward and I hope that it will work with increased entries and more enthusiasm and I think being on weekends and being in the centre of England, Malvern and Stafford is, is more considerate to the average exhibitor. I hope that it will be a success, I'm sure it will be. And um, what would you like to say to perhaps all the juniors that are watching this, you know, the ones that are perhaps now have family and to those new ones as well that are just beginning? The ones with young families, if they have got anything to contribute to show societies, please offer themselves up for it because we do need them and the young ones that are just at the beginning of their handling career learn from the older ones keep going don't moan when you don't win because you're not going to win all the time but uh, you know it's a it's a patience game really Boston Terrier, number 4358. We have the breeders group for the utility group to ring five, please. Now we have the Japanese Shiba Inu, 4741. The Kazen, number 4788. The Toy Poodle, 5053. The Skipper Key, 5079. The Tibetan Terrier, 5287. And the Tibetan Spaniel, 5227. And the winner of the utility group at Richmond 2014 is the Skipper Key, 5079. In group two, it's the Kazen 4788. Group three, the Japanese Shiba Inu 4741. And in group four, it's the Tibetan Terrier number 5287. A big hand of congratulations to our remaining shortlisted best of breed winners. Thank you very much. Please take the round, starting with the group winning Skipper Key, the Kazen. The Japanese Shiba Inu and the Tibetan Terrier. Trisha, congratulations. What a win. You won the champion stakes last week. I think you're better than that. Yeah, I no, know. It doesn't um, happen to people like me, but it does. But, I mean, that's amazing there. Amazing. I couldn't believe it. I got halfway across. The they did say the skipper key, didn't they? <laughs> so, just tell us a little bit about the dog and his wins. Oh, Georgie's done really well since he's been into the country. He did three shows and three wins this season, so he got his championship very quickly. Um, he's won Buba uh, Championship 
I, Mary took him to that. I, my husband was ill, so I was at home. And so we also know you in Australian Shepherds, Shepherds yeah. but is this your first skip? This is my first skip, yeah. And if my husband has, my husband has anything to do with it, the last skip. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't. He's not keen on the little black rats. The German wirehead pointer five 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 two. The Hungarian Vizsla, 5683. The Irish Setter, 5880. The Pointer, 6017. Cumber Spaniel, 6600. The Cocker Spaniel, 6639. The English Springer Spaniel, 6743. Shortlist the Vimarana six nine eight nine. And the winner of the Gundog Group at Richmond 2014, taking up the final place in the best in show lineup, is the German Wirehead Pointer 5552. In Group 2, it's the Cocker Spaniel 6639. Group three, it's the Irish setter, 5880. And completing the Gundog group, it's the pointer, number 6017. The German wirehead pointer, group one. The Cocker Spaniel, the Irish setter, and the pointer. So Sharon, Gundog Group winner here at Richmond 2014, how does that sound? It sounds absolutely fantastic, yes, a dream come true, yes, couldn't believe it. He's was such a baby, 13 months old, um, to be shortlisted I thought well, that would be it, we'll be happy with that, go home, and but to, to win that group, he never put a foot wrong, he's an absolute star. And you've handled many, many um, GSPs, yes. GWPs yes. and setters to, to big wins as well in the groups and stuff, but you know, does it still feel special? This feels special because this was the one puppy that my mum wanted to keep before she died in March. If uh, the new chairman were sat in the audience tonight, yes. what would you ask him? To care. I see myself as the judge that was banned. Terrier group is the Wire Fox Terrier 4293. From the Working Group, it's the Bull Mastiff. From the Pastoral Group, it's the Australian Shepherd number 2580. And from today's groups, first the Skipper Key number 5079. And the German Wirehead Pointer. And 
the first exhibit to be assessed is the toy group winner. This is the Maltese, which won through from any variety not separately classified. It was sent through from the group by Judge Ray Parent. This is the Maltese, number 1912, the toy group winner. Now we come to the Hound Group winner, which is the Petit Basset Griffon Vendillon. Sent through by Valerie Foss. This is number 1106. The PBGV, as it is more commonly known, was introduced to the UK from France in 1969. This is the Hound Group winner, the PBGV 1106. From the Terrier group, we have the Wirefox Terrier, which also won through from any variety not separately classified. This is the dog, 4293, sent through by Zena Thorne Andrews. The Terrier group winner, 4293. And now we have the winner of the working group. This is the Bull Mastiff, number 3712. Sent through from the group by Robin Newhouse. This is the Bull Mastiff, the working group winner, 3712. Next, we have the representative from the pastoral group. This is the Australian Shepherd Dog, number 2580. This was sent through to the group by Michael Vines. This is the Australian Shepherd, 2580, from the pastoral group. Now we come to the first of today's group winners, this being the Skipper Key from the Utility Group, sent through by Mark Kokoza. The Skipper Key, 5079, the winner of the Utility Group. And completing our seven group winners of this afternoon is, of course, the German Wirehead Pointer 5552 from the Gundog Group. This is the German Wirehead Pointer, winner of the Gundog Group, 5552. Five, Claire's taking them all around once. Let's hear it for our group winners, please. The Maltese. The PBGV. The Wirefox Terrier. The Bull Mastiff. The Australian Shepherd, the Skipper Key, and the German Wirehead Pointer. And Claire's called for the boards. And Best in Show at Richmond 2014 under Claire Coxall is the Wirefox Terrier number 4293. And in the reserve spot, it's the Maltese, 1912 from the Toy Group. Best in show, the Wirefox Terrier at Richmond 2014, with reserve going to the Maltese. Well, Bill, you've had a rather good year under Claire Cox, haven't you? Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. We are pop of the year. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. And it's I, I, I feel really pleased, without sounding over the top, I class that woman as a great dog person. I'm, I'm really chuffed with it, <laughs> getting that one off her, yeah. because I've only shown this dog three times, and I've won three best in shows with him. I was so, going to say, you're still unbeaten. <laughs> I'm still unbeaten, yeah. But he gave you a hard time. Oh, he did today, yeah. <laughs> I got a funny feeling he was, uh, he was thinking of the women today. <laughs> and you're leading the top dog table already, yeah. so you've got to be pretty pleased today. I'm thrilled, I'm absolutely thrilled, but uh, to be honest, you know, I'm going for the title, really. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going for the big one. Uh, I'm at that age now. I don't think I'll ever do it again. Want this? Have a dog like this with the success he's had, you know, in such a short time. Now we've heard from the judges why they like him. Yeah. What makes him a great one for you? For me, what makes him a great one? Unlike my father, who liked a lot of exaggeration, I, I prefer more to the standard, and I think this dog meets the standard. Uh, a lot of people go for long, massive, long, lean heads and great necks and short backs. And I find that a lot of dogs with these 
lose it in front movement. And I think this dog to me is the standard. He's a, he's a great moving dog. He's balanced, short back, big ribs, and a, a correct size. Yeah. No, that's what it makes. And apart from that, He's an absolute gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> he really is. He's a gentleman. Claire, you've judged so many times at this level, but I guess it's always an honour, isn't it? Of course it is, and especially here. And it had memories of my husband, who was president, secretary and then president. So it was pretty hard for me to come. So I made this outfit, and I did my best out there. And, and then what did you think of your seven group winners? I thought they were high quality. I was looking for the showmanship. The Fox Terrier was over showing at one point and giving his handler a hell of a bad time. But he settled and he was totally sound, totally gave it all to me and stood stacked perfect when, he, when I knew he had pushed his limits, you know. And then he looked, the, the frame of him was out of this world. And so was the Maltese. The Maltese never let up, covered the ground, top everything. And that's really important to you, isn't it? Oh, the showmanship. Showmanship. Got a show, dear. <laughs> They've got to show. Best in show winner for a 17th time is champion Travella striking steel the wire fox terrier. We've said it all before, but he made, he gave Bill Brown Cole a hard time tonight. He did actually, yeah, and especially actually under someone like uh, Claire Coxall, who is notorious, who watches showmanship. But yeah. actually, I think best in show tonight, a lot of the dogs were young yeah, yeah. and inexper inexperienced in the big ring. But, you know, there's no denying, you know, the confirmation and movement of that dog, yeah. its record, um, you know, Claire just couldn't deny it best in show. I think in that ring, like you say, we had maybe four new group winners so mm -hmm. that's a fantastic thing yeah. to see new group winners a coming through. A lot of them only sort of 12, 13, 14 months old. Yeah. Tonight's groups of course, yep. the first of which was the utility group. Yep. Um, Andrew Brace judged this Skipper Key at City of Birmingham and gave it the champion stakes. Yeah. Mark Kokosa this weekend gives it a group win. Yeah, no stranger to top awards, um, already got 22 tickets wow. and it was best in show at Booba a couple of years ago as well so but we've seen actually another skip winning the groups yes, actually yes, yeah, yeah. Um, at the latter part of this year so they se seem to be featuring prominently <laughs> at the moment you know you don't see them for a couple of years and they all come at once yeah like buses yeah um, and we spoke of young winners GWP 13 months old yeah German Wyatt that took the gun dog group yeah. you know and the gun dog group always you know it's, it's a really big group and to top a group at 13 months old is very impressive indeed um, very. it has done a lot of winning it's already got four tickets as well you know, like at you say, 13 months. at 13 months, yeah. it's very impressive. And it is the youngest show champion in its breed. And we have to give credit to Richmond here. The groups were so well run. Uh, the Gundog group winner got a little bit of a break before they came back in for best in show, but everything's run so smoothly. Yeah, it has. And it's really nice, the sun's shining as well. Yeah. We see <laughs> it has been really overcast. Hasn't been cold at all. No. Um, you know, a bit of a breeze as well to keep it cool for the dogs and that. But, you know, all credit to them. The showground looks lovely. It's a lovely venue as well. It's always a cracking show to come to. And, you know, and to be almost finished up, you know, by half past five is pretty impressive. Right. Well, thank you very much for joining us again, Marina. Are we, we going to see you soon? I'm sure we will, yeah. yeah. Got a few shows lined up this year, so. That's fantastic. <laughs> Not the last you can see. <laughs> <laughs> and a massive congratulations once again to Oliver at the Wire Fox Terrier, sitting just one All Breeds Best in Show short of the all-time record of 18. Thank you very much for watching and come back and watch the next Around the Dog World from the Yukunuba Champion Stakes Final. <laughs>